Flugder Damon at Heidi Park is my favorite B&M wing coaster. I should preface this by saying that I haven't ridden any of the ones in Asia, but I have ridden all the other operating ones, and Flugder Damon is head and shoulders above the other ones. Find out why in this review. Balger and Mabyard introduced the wing coaster a decade ago, and Merlin was the earliest adopter of this model. They added the first wing coaster with Raptor at Gardaland. The ride was so well received that they added another wing coaster with Swarm at Thorpe Park. 2014, Merlin opened another wing coaster, this time with Flug der Damon at Heidi Park in Germany. And Merlin has two additional wing coasters on the way for the 2023 season at Legoland Dutchland and Chessington World of Adventures. But back to Flug der Damonen. This coaster was placed in the Transylvania section of the park. The ride replaced the beloved Wildwasserbahn 2. This Schwarzkopf log flume ran along the hillside and it featured a shockingly tall 75 foot or 23 meter tall drop. It was one of the tallest drops on any traditional flume. Heidi had big shoes to fill with this ride's removal, and I think they more than did it with Flute der Damonen. Let's start with this ride's presentation. It is phenomenal. A lot of Heidi's coasters oddly feature white track, so it can be a bit hard to pick out this coaster in the skyline from a distance, but it sure looks nice and clean up close. And I love how the elements interact with the surroundings. The coaster runs all through Transylvania, diving adjacent to and beneath pathways. And this coaster uses the hillside like its predecessor. This creates some neat vantage points as you move through the area. I particularly like that observation deck atop the hill overlooking the ride. The station is themed to a church, but the walls are vandalized with warnings about demons, and you'll hear the ride's custom soundtrack blaring. It is a dark and ominous one from Ima score, and that matches the ride's eerie theme perfectly. Then the ride's trains are themed to look like these gnarly black demons. Not only do they look stunning, but you'll hear these demonic screeches at points in some of the valleys. It's a small touch, but it shows just how much care Merlin put into this ride's presentation. Each of those trains sees up to 24 riders. Guests ride in pairs on each side of the track, and the coaster is six rows with four guests in each. Flug der Damon is one of the park's most popular rides. On many days, it'll often have a 30 to 45 minute posted wait. I believe this ride once had a single rider line, but I have not seen it in use in any of my visits to Heidi. Your best bet to avoid a wait is to head here either at the very beginning or end of the day. Alternatively, you can purchase an express butler to skip the line pass. Not only do you almost always board the next train, but it gives you a significant advantage when it comes to seat selection. Heidi only lets enough people into the station to fill the next train. The attendant lets those with skip the line passes into the station first, so they get first pick of seats. You cannot wait for a specific row if it's already occupied. My favorite row in this ride was the back. I thought this row offered the most hang time. Further, I thought the right side of the train offered slightly more hang time than the left side as well. And as with many wing coasters, I prefer to ride in the inside seat. I think it offers a smoother ride. The outer seats offer the cooler visuals, but they are bouncier on the valleys, which can impact your ability to re-ride this coaster. In general, this is a very smooth ride, especially in those inside seats. It's about on par with the other wing coasters. I could and did marathon this coaster for an hour. Like all the B&M wing coasters, this one features vest restraints, and I find these quite comfortable. They hug your body, but they have enough give to not restrict the forces. Then they have the primary benefit of making headbanging impossible, improving guest comfort, and they are quite easy for the employees to check as well. They dispatch trains at a steady rate, minimizing stacking. Once you're dispatched, you turn out of the station and ascend the lift hill. This ride's height is posted at 130 feet or 40 meters, but I believe that figure is the difference in elevation from the ride's highest and lowest point rather than the height of the lift itself. Once you're at the top, you head into a wing over dive drop. I love these elements. Those up front get some nice hang time as you slowly rotate 180 degrees high off the ground. Those in back get some great whip as they're pulled through the twist faster and then yanked down to the ground. And that descent will also give those in back a little air time. This first valley has a fantastic head chopper with a bridge while also piling on the positive G's. 
I believe this is where the ride hits its max g-force of 4 g's. You then fly over a speed hill, and this element is magical. It feels straight out of a b and Hyper or Giga Coaster. Heck, it offers better airtime than most hills in Colossus right across the park. You get several seconds of very strong and sustained floater airtime here, even with those vest restraints. This element dives under a pedestrian bridge, which again produces a sweet near miss, while also applying some nice positive Gs. And if you're up front, those positives continue into the Immelman. I would gray out in that seat from the sustained Gs. The positives are still good in the back, but not quite as intense. The back compensates by getting some floater air times you twist out of the element and dive back down to the ground, especially if you're on the left side. The pullout has another good head chopper with a support, and then you navigate a zero G roll that goes uphill. Up front, you are pushed through this element. It is whippy and disorienting up there, and you go way too fast for hang time. Instead, you just get some laterals. It feels a bit more tenacious up here. Meanwhile, those in back float the entire way through the element. It comes down to personal preference, but I prefer that floatiness. Next is a turnaround that goes right up against bob Station. This maneuver has some decent Gs. The entrance is more compact because you're atop the hill, but the exit dives back down to the ride's lowest point, so you get some great pull in back. And the sense of speed in that valley is wonderful. Now it is time for the ride's signature element, the one-of-a-kind demonic knot. This is comprised of an inclined dive loop, followed by an inclined immelman. But rather than riding like those elements, it honestly feels like two twisted and angled zero-g rolls back to back. The first one offers identical forces to the ride's first zero-g roll. It's whippy up front with some laterals, and then chock full of hang time in the back. The valley in between blasts everyone with positives. Then the second inversion rides similarly up front. Those in back will get another dose of hang time, but it's not quite as pronounced this time around. Then, because of how this element is angled and profiled, it is extremely disorienting. You have no idea which way you're heading. Flug der Damon and finishes with this funky turnaround. The entry rises upwards and then banks nearly 90 degrees at the apex. It feels like a slower RMC wave turn. Those on the right side will get a pinch of air time, and then everyone will get some lateral hang time from the speed loss. You then dip downwards for a deceptively intense turn that lays on the positives one last time. You would not expect that after how much you decelerated a second ago. You then twist upwards into the final brake run, and if you're on the left side, you'll get a small bit of air time as you level off. You then hit the brakes, ending the 2,533 foot or 772 meter long coaster. I was actually surprised the length figure was that short because the ride feels noticeably longer with all those elements. Another aspect about this ride do need a praise is its pacing, which isn't typically something you say about a wing coaster. Fluter Damon has no wasted elements. Not only that, all the elements are great, and you go briskly in between each one. So what would I rate Fluter Damon in? I would give this wing coaster a 10 out of 10. Overall, this probably is more like a 9 out of 10 when compared with all coasters, but I decided to go with the perfect rating here because it's head and shoulders better than all the other wing coasters. I couldn't think of anything that needed to be changed. I liked this ride back in 2019, but it absolutely blew me away after my 2022 rides. This is a masterpiece. From the top-notch presentation to the unique use of terrain, this coaster is all the visuals you'd expect from this model then the pacing and elements are far better than usual. You have that incredible speed hill, and five inversions that all offer a blend of airtime, hang time, positive Gs, and or laterals. Then the remaining turns and valleys are no slouch either, offering some interesting and strong forces. So those are my thoughts on Flug der Damon and Heidi Park. What are your thoughts on this b and wing coaster? Is it your favorite one of the model as well? Let me know if you like this ride as much as me down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.